Collectors Canvas, the podcast where we explore the world of sports card collecting and the captivating stories that collectors bring to the table. I'm your host, Aaron, the proud owner of Tropic Collects, and today we got an engaging chat with a new collector who's been causing ripples in the sports card scene. Please give a warm welcome to your very own Peter Fong, a.k.a. the Canadian Sports Card Investor on Instagram. Peter captures his passion for sports card collecting through his journey. We witnessed the excitement and curiosity that accompany newcomers as they transverse this (laughs) intricate landscape. Without further ado, Peter Fong. Thanks, Darren. I'm I'm excited to do one of my first podcasts. Um, I'll plug my name first. So if you don't know me, go to Instagram, Canadian Sports Card Investor. Give me a follow, give me a like, enjoy my videos, Um, and we're going to talk cards with Darren here. Tropic Connects, I'm going to plug him too. Instagram, Tropic Connects, he's great. I met him at a show, and and here we are. It's all about the hobby. Um, I've given to the hobby, it's given to me, and um, here we are right here on my first podcast. Okay, so Peter, are you ready? Yep. Okay, so let's start by diving into the roots of your collecting adventure. Could you tell us some of the initial sports cards that you brought into your collection and show us as a matter well, of fact? It started back in, you were too young. You probably weren't even alive. Uh, there was a, a sports, it's called a junk wax error. So I started back then. I know about it. <laughs> you know about it. Um, I lived it. So um, everybody was excited. They thought they were going to buy cards to fund their college, you, you know, fee, you, tuition or whatever. Everybody had, um, for example, like, for for bass for for hockey it was hockey cards in Canada, um, the Joe Sakic rookie, um, the Yarma Yager rookie the next year, um, all those mass produced cards. Everybody thought you know I have a hundred of them and it's going to fund my college education. We were we did not know it's never happened before a junk wax error. So everybody was just stockpiling them. I think I had maybe a uh, hundred Todd Van Poppel rookie cards for the Oakland A's. Um, cool. He was the hottest prospect at the time, number one draft pick, um, and he didn't amount to much. So things are different now. There was no inserts back then. Um, it was just base set, and they mass produced it. They wouldn't stop printing, and we did not know at that time. How many did they produce of that? Uh, the numbers, no one's going to give a number, but I think it was in the, in the millions of, of just base cards. There was nothing else. It was just you know a 400-card set and you know rookies in there, and they just printed the whole thing and just wouldn't stop printing for the entire year, I believe. Uh, that's what I keep hearing. Um, oh, yeah, and there was no problem getting cards. You can go to anywhere and get cards. Uh, similar to now, all the corner stores, um, people are buying boxes, and you can still get them right now. They're, they're, they're very inexpensive. The 89, 90, 92, 93, 94, you can get them still now because there is a lot of them. And, they're, and because of the supply and demand, they're not worth that much. Um, one of my cards that I do have from there, and uh, there was no grading back then. Ah. Just throw, yeah, there was no grading back then. One of the cards I kept, and I got graded, was, this could probably be my best card. So if you see my videos. Is it your this, Wayne Gretzky rookie? It is my Wayne Gretzky rookie. You got it, Darren, right here. It's graded a PSA 5. Whoa, that's a big card. It, it's not as big as some of the new shinier cards. I, mean, I love your Kareem rookie. <laughs> um, so we're, we're, that's we are, probably worth more. That's probably yeah. worth more, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think we're both flashing one of our best cards. Um, I, I, 100%. Another one of my favorite cards, and I, uh, you know, I had the follow-up with it, is uh, a set, actually. This one right here, I'm going to show you, Darren. I think you're into basketball, so you might know this one. Whoops. You might know this one. This one is the entire sticker Whoa! set. For the, the Jordan, I got them all right here. And How many do you well, have? I got them. There's 11, 11 in there. Oh, you have, have the two, entire set. I have the entire sticker set. Um, is We'll start off with Adrian. Adrian oh, I'm sorry. Who? Alex, Alex in English. Alex English. Is that Ungraded. A the, yeah, it's, it is a rookie that year. We got, we got Larry Bird. Oh, that's Ungraded. Cool. Uh, Reem Abdul Jabbar, you're very familiar with that if you can see that. Of that's course. graded. That's actually really uh, cool. We got Magic Johnson. Oh, uh, wow. Little, gla- little glare there. 
Uh, Dr. J, Julius Irving. A little glare there. I, I, don't, I don't think you can see that well. Correction. Patrick Ewing. Here we go. Okay. That, that should be a rookie, right? That is a rookie, I believe so. Isaiah Thomas. Sick. There's 11 of them. Uh, the Dream, Akeem. Akeem the Dream. There That's you go. a rookie. That I know is a rookie. That is a rookie. Akeem. Uh, not Akeem. 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 Dominique Wilkins. Yep. And here is Adrian Dantley. There you go. He's an all-star back then. And, of course, the one that saved it the last, the best for the last. The GOAT. The GOAT. PSA 6. Michael Jordan sticker right here. That's sick. So you you love basketball, so I had to bring this out and show you in the podcast um, because that you is a PC. Cards, Peter. And that is a PC for sure. That is a PC for sure. 100%. Just like this Kareem is for a little. <laughs> I do not have that. I'm going to get one of those. You have a Kareem. Uh, I'm going to show everybody my, my Kareem. Here we go. Second year Kareem right there. The second year. That's second year. Before. That is actually a PSA two and a half. Mine's only a PSA two. <laughs> Uh, we can trade cards one day, but uh, I don't think you'll do that. I don't think you'll <laughs> do that. I don't, I don't think I'd do that. I don't think you'll do that. Uh, and uh, I'll throw in this Jerry West, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll pass it back to you. If cool. we're showing off cards to the podcast, there you go. That, that, that's a cool Jerry West. That's a four. That's a four right there. Miscut. Yeah, my, my, my Kareem is miscut. Um, the thing about my Kareem. Is it, is it MC on that too? I, I yeah, can't quite. MC. Yeah, I got an MC on this. I think that this year is notorious for MCs. Um, the miscut is actually here at the top. You can see the bottom of the net. Yeah, I think I have it too on the back. Uh, it's really bad on the top. You, you can't see anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's still a cool card. Still the logo man himself. It is the I logo guess. man. It is the logo man. Um, That's okay. a true logo man. <laughs> I got to show you. I got to show you one more thing before, um, before I hand it over to you. Give me a second here. 100%. He has some crazy cards, guys. Sorry about that, Darren. Here, this one I'm gonna flash over, and then we're gonna sh we're gonna hand it back to you. So these are commons. These are commons right here, uh, from the '68. I don't know who this guy is. This is uh, Happy. His name is Happy. I don't know who he is. Happy who? Happy Harrison. Yeah, Harrison. I don't know who he is. <laughs> I have um, another one here, a Lou Dunson. So uh, it's gonna Lou be older. Hudson. Yeah, Lou, Lou Hudson, sorry. From the Atlanta Hawks. Jerry Lucas. Okay. He's not a random. I don't know. Who, I don't know who, I'm not sure who they are. Willie MacArthur. Well, Jerry Lucas and uh, the other guy are not really randoms. I think they're Hall of Famers. Bob, Bob Kaufman. Cool. There's a lot here. I, I got a lot of great. Len, Len Chappell. Oh, wow. Cool. We're, we're going to go keep going. <laughs> oh, is it Kareem's to me? Okay, here's Emmett, Emmett Bryant. Emmett Bryant. Cool. <clears throat> Ray Scott. These, some of these are... Oh, here's another Lou Hudson. There's another Lou Hudson. Oh, this one I think some people might know. Oscar Robertson. I know Oscar Robertson. There you go. It's a Beckett. It's a Beckett. Oh, this is a famous person right here. Well! You like your basketball. I'm glad you saw it right away. Will Chamberlain. Not sure what year. It's just uh, these are all 6970s. He has um, some crazy cards, guys. Crazy, crazy stuff. So I'll give you the last three. I don't want to do individual. These people, I don't know who they are, but they're commons. They came in a, in a back. This is Terry Dischinder. Oh, Terry Dischinger. Dischinger. I pronounced it wrong. Billy Cunningham. I think he's famous. Yeah, he's famous. He's famous and... Elvin Hayes. That guy's actually a Hall of Famer. Okay, so there's a lot of Hall of Famers here. I'm not versed in basketball as much as you. I know Wilt, the Logo Man, and uh, Kareem. Or cool. actually, it's Lou Alcindor, I think. Lou not Alcindor. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Before he changed his name. Yeah, he changed yeah, his he name. Yeah, he changed his name. He changed his name. He wanted to be the first uh, Muslim basketball player, I think, or something. Something like that. I, I you know, I, I was not alive back then, so I, I don't know. I. <laughs> no, I, I, I wouldn't think you would be. <laughs> um, tell me why you like why you picked these cards and why they have a special place in your journey. Well, the the, the Gretzky one, um, 
this journey started back. I bought this Gretzky with a, a lot in a lot for about four hundred dollars, if oh, you can believe wow. that. So it had a it had a Messier rookie. Um, it had. Um, you still have the Messier. I still have the Messier, the Mark Messier. It's not graded. It's not that great of a card. Um, it had, uh, I think, uh, a whole bunch of these Wayne Gretzky second and third year cards. They were in really bad shape. I had my eye on the Gretzky rookie, and this is before grading. So there was a lot of uh, counterfeits out there, and I was worried. And there was no way I could know unless I looked for the the dot on his shoulder. That's there was counterfeits with the dot on his shoulder also. So um, for the years. Yeah, the, the little dot right there, if you can see it, it's a, if you Google how a fake I mean, Gretzky happens, it, there's a dot in the printing process that pops up. Oh, and wow. It's on, the, it's on the authentic one. And back then, there was no grading, so I, I wasn't sure if it was real or not. Um, but for $400 at that time, I, uh, I took a leap of faith, and, I, and then I got it graded, and all my fears were alleviated. Got it graded at the Toronto Sports Card Expo. Um, out of Whoa. the pandemic, the first time it that's came out of the pandemic. Story. Yeah, so that's that's my that's the journey for the Wayne Gretzky card. Um, my favorite card, probably my best card from one the junk wax era. Um, this was bought during the junk wax era. This was not part of the junk wax era, but it was. I purchased it in the junk junk wax era. That's cool. <clears throat> so you had a feeling before before you bought it that it was going to go up. Uh, it was already up at that time. It was probably one of the more expensive cards out there. Um, and you no, know, not compared to now. Now it's, it, it, it can really go up there. Um, back yeah, then it was, it was expensive. I, I've, seen, I've seen them now. Like, yeah, they've, they've always, always been, been yeah, they've, yeah, they've always been expensive. Uh, it, it, it was expensive when I bought it, um, at that time, but he, that person gave me a, a decent deal on, uh, it was in a shoe box, all the cards, if you can believe that. He didn't oh, even have, wow. to, he didn't even have top loaders or anything. Oh wow! Holy yeah. Um. Here, here comes the next question. Here. Um. Could you tell us about how to make content, kind of? Because you're you're known for content. So, the Darren, you're right. So, um, I, I've loved cards for a long time, um, but content is a new thing for me. Um. It's, uh, we're in August right now. I started my, my Instagram account from not knowing what Instagram was in March of this year. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's been like four months. You're growing quick. I've grown quick. Um, I just decided to make some videos. And uh, I realized when I went on the Instagram that if I follow all the sports car people, they, they were there. They were, they were collectors. There were stores um, and vendors, I guess. So... At that point, I, I, I followed everybody and they followed me back. So I had a couple of hundred. Okay. Um, I didn't make any videos. And I thought to myself, am I a store? I am not. Am I a vendor? I am not. I am a collector. Collectors post cards to sell and trade among each other and also to show off. Um, and, also to and also to communicate on Instagram. <clears throat> when, I, when I realized that, I go, There's, there, there has to be something else in the Canadian world in sports cards. So I, I followed a lot of the US people and I saw that a lot of them were doing content. They were not posting cards. They were not buying cards. A lot of people were doing deals and making it uh, content, which is great. Um, you know, uh, negotiations is part of the hobby and that's always fun. They did that. Um, I wanted to do kind of like where I wanted to show the hobby um, with no agenda. So everyone had a, always had an agenda. The stores wanted to promote their store with product, um, show cards that they were selling. Collectors wanted to show cards to trade and sell and just you know get more people looking at it. So they always had an agenda. I My first couple of videos, I just interviewed people, asking them what, the, what their best card is. That's all I did. And I mashed them up. In, yeah, sorry? You still do that today. I still do that today. Um, I mashed them all together and I realized when I read how to make Instagram successful, it's gotta be 20 seconds or less. And I go, how the hell am I going to get six people in there at 20 seconds? So I did that um, with captions. What is your best card? And it took off. Nobody in the Canadian sports card world did that. Um, and the first couple of videos didn't do that well. Um, and the vendors and, the, and the, uh, the vendors that I did it with didn't understand why I was doing that. Um, and then I finally, and then I got to the CSC show, and I did a couple of the bigger players because that's one of the bigger shows. 
that came out of the pandemic. I'm going to say publicly here, and whoever's listening, they can take it with a grain of salt. My opinion is the Canadian, the Canadian sports card CSC show is the second biggest show in, I'm going to say Ontario for now, besides the sports card expo. I'm gonna. It, it, there was nothing. I would 100% agree. There was nothing there before the the pandemic that and 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 the first CSC show was not the second biggest. It was just a, a regular show. I went to that. I met Jason. Um, and and you know he met a lot of people. He was just a, a promoter, and he made it. He made it into the second biggest card show, besides the expo, which is great because it wasn't there before. I created sports Canadian sports card investor. Not to copy Jeff Wilson in the States, but to, to give a, a general you know, name, nothing to boast about. I'm just a sports card investor, but I threw a Canadian in there um, and wanted to create something that wasn't there either. Content that is, has no agenda. So that's where my, my content creation came from. And people liked it because it was, it was a communal, it was a for the hobby. And it really was for the hobby because there was no agenda on my part to promote a show promote my cards, just trade and yeah. buy uh, products, releases at the stores. I never do that. It's um, promotion for the hobby because the hobby is giving me an outlet. So I'm giving back to the hobby and I'm, I'm really excited that it's taken off. And um, when you said I made a big splash, um, it's only been about four months and I can't believe we are doing a podcast about my journey. You've definitely made a big influence on a bunch of people, including myself. Um, I started off a YouTube channel just because of you, honestly. Um, I, saw I did. Your I, I was inspired. Wow! Wow! I did not know that. Um, <laughs> you can plug the YouTube channel again right now if you want. Definitely. Um, go subscribe to Tropicalx on YouTube. The podcast will be available on there too. Um, pretty much I, that's I, it. <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't know what to say. You uh, that I influenced uh, you to to be out there because it's really hard to be a person that goes up to strangers and said, would you like to make a video? I did that for about three sh- card shows in a row. And it, 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 it seemed weird to a lot of people. <clears throat> I met a lot of people also. I met a lot of great people. And, um, you know, they, they always want, they wanted a repeat video because they saw the success of the first couple of them when it got bigger and bigger. And um, Darren, because I, I make the videos at home and I post them, I'm in a vacuum. I don't really talk to people about the videos. So this is a great podcast for me to just express my gratitude to all the people that I don't know, like you, until today, or until I met you a couple of days ago at the card show, um, where uh, where I've influenced people, because I don't see anybody. Um, I just work on my my posting, and I'm not sure if other content creators are like that, where they're by themselves. So um, I, I do message some other collectors and say, you know, what do you think of my video? They said it's great. But to talk in great depth about it and how I've influenced other people to to be able to create their own content, I, I think it's great. I mean, it's, it's only been four months. I don't even know what we're going to do in, in one year uh, for you, for me. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it sky's the limit and everyone just has encouragement for me. So I'm going to give encouragement to you for your, for your content creation on Instagram, on YouTube, wherever it is. Thank you. Um, I have no problem promoting people that are good people in the hobby. Um, always, never, never problem there. I will promote um, vendors. I have no problem with that either. But n- when you think about it, they have an agenda. Um, mm-hmm. And if you think about my videos after a while, if you look at them, I do not have an agenda. I'm for the hobby. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, I don't promote anything. So that's where my journey started, and it took a little bit of thinking. And I'm glad that it's taken off. And I'm actually very heartfelt that I've influenced you because it for. For someone your age to go out there and just say hello to people is hard. Yeah, of course. Um, it definitely is difficult <coughs> to go out there and say hello. Um, I've noticed myself that I'm getting a little bit of a brand just like you were. Like when I saw you at the show and I heard that you were a Canadian sports car investor, I was like, oh my God, you're a Canadian sports car investor. And you were like, oh my God, you're Tropic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I know your Instagram handle. I did not know you were... <laughs> 14 years old, I, I didn't know. And that's what the shock came from because it seemed like it was an adult that was very veteranized or, or seasoned in the hobby. Um, your, your comments... In the, I'm in, a hard in, believer in this hobby. Well, I, 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 but you're only 14. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I, think, uh, I think you can influence people your age also. I mean, it, it, it's a big deal. 
um, you know, to, to be able to go out there and be an industry leader in something that doesn't exist. I don't think anything exists right now for my type of content. Um, and I you're, don't think so either. yeah, and, and that's what everyone keeps saying. And, and uh, hopefully, unique. thank you. Thank you. I hope you have a, a great journey too. And, um, you know, we're going to probably journey together. Um, 100%. yeah. And, and, and meet people, um, say hello, take selfies, um, engage, um, everything. So my journey is, is four months old. Yours is probably less, I think, isn't it? Or, um, I'd, I'd say it's more, but <laughs> I didn't really start since like, till like last year. And then I just started content this year. Well, I, I, I started my Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. I started my Instagram in January, but I just posted cards. That's all I did. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Just, just like everybody else. Cause that's what everyone else is doing. Uh, and then I, and then I started the video in March. My first video was in March. Um, after one of the card shows and, um, after CSC. no, it wasn't CFC. It was, um, Surprisingly, it was a show in Guelph, Ontario. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I met a lot. Uh, I, I, I didn't know anybody. I just said hello and said, do you want to make a video? What's your best card? <laughs> and, and there you go. And then I went to CSC and it was uh, <clears throat> it, it grew from there. And, and when you meet the big people at the CSC show, it helps you grow. So um, hopefully um, me being a, a, a little bit more uh, engaging, I can help you grow too. So I'm giving yeah. back to the hobby. And I want you to give back to the hobby too when you can engage with your generation. It, uh, I don't even know what to say. It, it's great for that. Yeah, neither do I. Um, anyways, Peter, I think I'm running out of time here. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. Um, your presence and showcasing your amazing journey was absolutely amazing. To all our viewers, please stay engaged in all our future podcasts. Um, also, go check out Peter's Instagram. Go plug yourself one more time, one last time. Instagram is Canadian Sports Card Investor. Thank you, Darren. Until we meet again, continue to savor the adventure of collecting and basking in the stories each card brings. Hopefully, Darren, you have a good night. Good night, Darren. Thank you again. You too. Peace.